Well, look at that. This place is funky. It's unique. It has its own charm. And that's a perfect place to talk about neural network because that's how I feel about them. So neural network and deep learning is what everybody talks about in the media. That is really where the bleeding edge of computer science and of data science and machine learning is today. But of course, these algorithms are quite complex. And so for a primer, they may be a bit too advanced, but no primer would be good without at least trying to understand how they work. But would you believe it? These algorithms have been around for a long time. The very first perceptron, which is the very initial neural net, was actually invented in the 1950s. So it's been more than 70 years now that we've been dealing with artificial neurons and neural network. But the difference is that modern neural networks are much smarter in terms of their design. We have much faster computers and we have better data as well. That's why we have an explosion lately of neural networks. So let's look at the very simple principle behind neural network. So the architecture of a neural network is relatively standard. You always have an input layer. Now in this input layer, you have as many neurons or artificial neurons as you have inputs or your feature vectors. And then of course you have an output layer which has as many neurons typically as you have classes that you're trying to predict. Or if it's a regression algorithm, you could have just one neuron that predicts a number between zero and one. But the interesting bit, of course, of the neural network is in between these two layers. And that is known as the hidden layers. And the very first perceptron or the very first neural network had only one hidden layer and was very limited in what it could do. Nowadays, you will see we have many more hidden layers. In this case of this fairly simple neural network, we have two hidden layers, hidden layer one and hidden layer two. So how do you train a neural network? Well, the principle is to use what is known as feed forward. And essentially you feed forward all of the data that is known as one epoch. Once you fed forward all of the data, what happened is that the weight of the different connections are adjusted in proportion to the cost function for the neural network. And that cost function can be variable. So you adjust the weight, and once the weights are adjusted, you feed forward all of the data again. In fact, you do that many times until you reach a point where you're satisfied with your accuracy, recall, and all of your different metrics. Once this is done, you're satisfied that you've basically fit the neural network to your particular data set, and then you can use it for prediction. And prediction is fairly simple. You input a value and you follow the different um, weight of that neural network and you come to hopefully the right conclusion, which in our case would be the number three. So neural network in principle are simple and details of course, of course are much more complicated, but the best way to think of them is as extremely nonlinear algorithm that can fit the data very well. In fact, they have so many hyperparameters and so many weight that it can very easily overfit data. And one of the drawbacks of neural network is that you need a lot of data to train them. And that's not always easy to get in geosciences. But if you do have a problem that is complex, that is extremely nonlinear, and if you do have enough data, neural nets might be the way to go. Yeah.